All right, let's do a quick review of the gas laws. First, we have the pressure volume relationship. That was first determined by Robert Boyle, no other than. Robert Boyle worked with gases. He uh, looked at the pressure volume relationship and what he said was that the pressure and the volume were inversely proportional. Now we can use that pressure volume relationship in this equation. P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. All that means is that the initial pressure times the initial volume is equal to the final pressure times the final volume. It's an inverse relationship. So as pressure goes up, volume goes down, and vice versa. As volume goes up, pressure goes down. Expand the volume of the container, the pressure goes down. Uh, reduce the volume of the container, the pressure goes up. Then we have Charles' Law, which is a direct relationship. And that direct relationship is between the volume and the absolute temperature. If you're given a problem using Charles' Law, what you want to make sure that you do is you put the temperature in the absolute temperature scale. That means if you're given a temperature in Celsius, you add 273 to get it into a Kelvin temperature. It won't work in Celsius. It happens to be in Kelvin, has to be in Kelvin. So it's volume over the absolute temperature. Initial volume over initial temperature is equal to the final volume over the final temperature. Then we have uh, uh, what we also know as Gay-Lussac's law. That's the pressure temperature relationship. If we look at that relationship, it's uh, just like Charles' Law with volume over temperature, only in this case, volume is constant and the amount is constant. So this analogy would be the hairspray can. As uh, if what it says on a hairspray can is don't, uh, don't, <laughs> don't destroy this can, don't dispose of this can in fire. Why? You throw the hairspray can, which has a rigid volume, you throw it in the fire, the temperature, the temperature increases, which means that the pressure increases. And if the pressure increases, eventually the can's going to explode. So we can do P1 divided by T1, absolute temperature, is equal to P2 divided by T2 at constant amount and constant volume. And then we have Avogadro's Law, which is another direct relationship, which says that the volume is absolutely proportional to the number of moles of gas. So this would be, the analogy here would be blowing up the balloon. As you, as you put more moles of gas, more moles of air in the balloon, the volume of the balloon increases by putting by just blowing up the balloon, you get more moles. And this is at constant pressure and uh, constant temperature, the volume increases. Then we have uh, a clicker question, which said, at constant amount and constant pressure. So what are, what are our uh, variables? Our variables are volume and temperature. That's Charles' Law. So if we the temperature is decreased, since this is Charles' Law, which is an absolute temperature scale, it's a direct relationship. If we decrease the temperature, that means we decrease the volume, and so you have a volume decrease. Then we had another clicker question that said, if the temperature is increased at constant volume and constant amount, so that's going to be Gay-Lussac's Law, pressure over the absolute temperature equals a constant. And what are we doing? If we increase the, uh, if the temperature is increased, if the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up, and eventually, what? so the pressure goes up, eventually the hairspray can explodes. Then we came to the ideal gas law. Now, I noticed on the activity, guys, a lot of you did not change 
your pressure into atmospheres and it costs you dearly. If you're given millimeters of mercury or you're given tours, you need to divide, seven, divide by 760. So if you're given a pressure in, let's say it's 743 tor or 743 millimeters of mercury, please divide by 760 tor per atmosphere to convert your pressure into atmospheres. Make sure the volume is liter. Make sure you have moles. If you're given a temperature in Celsius, please add 273. I'll give you the R value, which is 0.0821 liter atmospheres over moles Kelvin. Please remember that standard temperature and pressure are 0 degrees Celsius, which is also, if you add 273, you get 273 Kelvin, and it's also one atmosphere, which can, which can also be represented as 760 millimeters of mercury. Then we come to uh, the, the combined gas law, and the combined gas law is used when we have a, a system that's a closed system where moles are kept constant, and that's just Boyle's law divided by the absolute temperature, which gives us a combination of Gay-Lussac's law and Charles' law and Boyle's law. So all three of those laws are combined when N is equal to a constant value. So that's the combined gas law. And then we have derivatives of the ideal gas law. Now, derivatives of the ideal gas law, guys, are based on this. You take PV equals NRT. You recognize that you can get moles by dividing the gram mass by the molar mass. That gives you moles, which is equal to N. And I can make the substitution. So I'm just going to substitute this value, grams divided by the molar mass into the ideal gas law. That gives me PV is equal to grams divided by the molar mass times R times T. If I want to solve for the molar mass, all I have to do is move molar mass to one side of the equation and isolate it. So I multiply both sides by molar mass. That gives me the equation that you see right here. It gives me molar mass times P times V equals grams times R times T. And then I simply divide by P V. And if I divide by P V, I wind up with molar mass is equal to G R T. And I'm going to use uh, the community of uh, law of multiplication and simply put volume under, under the gram mass divide, uh, multiplied times P. Now, I'm going to take it a step further. If I take grams divided by volume, that equals density. So now I can say the molar mass is equal to the density times R times T divided by P. And those are the derivatives of the ideal gas law. So let's go ahead and work some problems very quickly here. So if I'm going to work this particular problem, this says a sample of chlorine gas is confined in a container. I have a volume of 5.0 liters. I have a pressure that's in 228 torr, and I have a temperature that's in 27 degrees Celsius. So this is an ideal gas law problem. PV equals NRT. In this particular ca case, I'm solving for moles. So I divide both sides by RT. And that gives me the number of moles is equal to PV divided by RT. All I have to do to solve this problem is take my pressure of 228 tor divide that pressure by 760 tor per atmosphere, and that's going to put my pressure in atmospheres. 
I'm going to multiply times the volume, which is given in liters. 5.0 liters. I'm going to divide that by the, the gas constant R, 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres over moles Kelvin times the absolute temperature, which is going to be 27 Celsius plus 273. And then I'm going to make sure that everything in the denominator is in brackets if before I put it in my calculator. So you can go ahead and calculate that and you can get your answer. But that's how I set it up, guys. It's no big deal. Depending on what you're solving for, you just solve for the particular variable. Let's take a look at this. Calculate the molar mass of, of a gas. Uh, if you have 4.40 grams of the gas and it occupies 3.50 liters of the gas at 560 millimeters of mercury and 41 degrees Celsius. You know you're going to have to convert Celsius to Kelvin by taking your 41 degrees Celsius, adding 273. You know you're going to have to convert your pressure to atmospheres. How do you do that? You just take your 560 millimeters of mercury, divide by 760. The formula that you're going to use is based on the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. We're going to make the substitution for moles. N is equal to grams divided by the molar mass. That gives us PV. PV is equal to grams divided by the molar mass times R times T, solve for molar mass, that gives us molar mass is equal to GRT divided by V times P. Plug in your values, guys, and you'll get the molar mass of your compound. I believe the answer for this particular problem wound up being around 44 grams per mole. And if you calculate the molar mass of carbon dioxide, you find that it's around 44 grams per mole. So our unknown gas could be identified as carbon dioxide.